go. So hold my five second countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> So one thing a lot of you probably don't know about me is that I'm a science teacher. Yay! Uh, I teach several different courses and one of those courses is physical science. It's a ninth grade course that is basically an intro to physics, intro to chemistry kind of engineering course. So what's really nice about where I work is they actually give me quite a bit of leniency on the direction where I want to take my courses. If there's a lab I want to do, I do it. So that means if I want my students to play Kerbal Space Program, you know, for educational purposes, we're gonna play Kerbal Space Program. And basically what KSP is, is it's a flight simulator only for rockets. You don't just build airplanes, you build all kinds of aerospace technology. You build shuttles, rockets, satellites, probes, landers, rovers, space stations, really anything you want. And it's awesome, it's a lot of fun. The physics that it uses is actually pretty realistic and if you don't build things right, they tend to fall apart and explode. And the way the environment's set up is it's actually kind of modeled after our own solar system. You can go to any moon or any planet that kind of resembles Mars or Jupiter or what have you. And it's really challenging to get to places. Nobody ever builds a rocket the first time and succeeds on getting to space without killing their Kerbal. It's not a new game. It's been out since like 2011, but they keep updating it every so often. So it's very relevant and it's still kind of expensive. It's, it's like $40, I think, last I checked on Steam. And it's even available on Xbox and PlayStation now. Now, unfortunately, the laptops we have at school for our students aren't good enough to run this kind of software. So instead, I brought in my own personal gaming laptop hooked it up to the smart board, and I grouped my students up into groups of like five or six students and gave each one of them a job. One person would be a command module engineer, another one the lunar lander engineer, uh, first stage, second stage, and third stage booster engineers, all that kind of good stuff. And their goal, their mission was modeled after the Apollo 9 mission where you know NASA had to take a lunar lander up into orbit around the Earth, undock it, test out all the controls and maneuverability, and then redock it, and then come back to Earth safely and alive. So that was the mission I gave each of these groups. Build a rocket in Kerbal Space Program, launch it into orbit around Kerbin, which is the, the Kerbin's Earth, and undock a lunar lander and test out the maneuverability and do some science before redocking it with your command module. Put all your three Kerbals in the command module and bring them back to Earth safely. And none of them have played this game before, which makes it even better. Now there were four groups and each group had to build their rocket on my personal laptop. So what I did was I gave each group a stack of papers about this thick and on each piece of paper was a listed part from the game. It's picture, it's description, what it's capable of, what it does. And so it forced each engineer on the team to figure out exactly what they needed and how they needed to build it so that it worked with other group members parts. And then once they had that all figured out, the lead engineer would just list all the parts his engineers needed give that list to me and we would build it together in the simulator. All right, now you know the backstory, you know what the lab entailed. Now I'm gonna show you the first launches of these four groups. Now obviously I couldn't show their faces on camera, but I did record the audio. And it kind of reminded me of the actual first launch of the Saturn S1B and how excited those engineers were when that thing got off the launch pad. Okay guys, we're gonna watch this compilation now. Just keep in mind these kids have never played this game before and I kinda didn't mention staging to them. I let them work that problem out on their own. After it's finished rolling, I'll pick it back up with some commentary and I'll explain how they finished the lab. Enjoy the show.
Okay, so I think you could tell by the sound of their voices that these kids really had a great time with this lab. So this is actually the second year I've done this lab. In both years, there was an exciting moment where every kid was actually on the edge of their seat. To, to admit it, I was on the edge of my seat too. Last year was when we went to the moon. We actually had a mission where I made the kids go to the moon because there were less students and less groups. Therefore, we had more time to work with them. Um, but they went to the moon and the last group to go had a smaller rocket and they managed to get to the moon and get off the moon. But when they were trying to get back in orbit around the moon to make their way back to Kerbin or Earth, they ran out of fuel. So they were stuck using, uh, using monopropellant tanks for the rest of their mission. And they just happened to get back to Earth with 0.02 like, percent or whatever of their monopropellant left. And everyone was on the edge of their seats and disbelief, and disbelief like, how did that happen? So that was really cool. But this year, what was really exciting was a group actually got into orbit around Earth, detached their, their lunar lander, and they didn't have a way to dock it back to the command module. So what they had to do was leave the, the poor Kerbal then the command module uh, alone in space to die a lonely death, and the other two aborted to come back to Earth. So they retrofired their lander and made their way back in the atmosphere you know, retropropulsively it decelerated as they're coming through the atmosphere so they didn't blow up from the heat. And they happened to land the lunar module on the surface of the Earth with it running out of fuel just one meter above the ground. And as you can see, that little bump in the landing destroyed the nozzles of their engines, but it still, you know, stayed upright on its legs and the two Kerbals were alive and happy. You know, the other one wasn't uh, happy. He was dead, you know, forever in space, orbiting the Earth for eternity. But yeah, over the course of a week of launching rocket after rocket, all the groups improved. All the groups managed to get in orbit with a, a lunar lander. And uh, two of the three completed the mission successfully. Uh, one group killed one Kerbal by leaving them, like I said, stranded in, stranded in orbit uh, forever. And the other group killed all three of their Kerbals. <laughs> but uh, that might have been uh, pilot error, which was uh, my job. So yeah, if, if any of my fellow teachers are watching this, I highly recommend uh, you figure out a way to get this game in your classroom. Your students will really love it. And you know they tell me that they learned a lot from it and they can appreciate uh, aerospace engineering a lot more because of it. You know, it also teaches them that failure isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as you learn from it and you don't give up. And you know what, from my personal experience, I think that's actually one of the most important things you can teach a high school student. But yeah, I thought you guys would find this as entertaining as I did and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Stay righteous.